Three, two, one, and fly. Good luck. Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Kanada'nın en iyi Politeknik Üniversitesi, Kaplan Politeknik Üniversitesi eğitimi kendinden dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı sağ alt köşede Questions bölümünden yönlendirmeyi unutmayın. Yes, can the stage is yours now. Perfectly. Thank you, Zeynep. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ken Abad. I am from Kwantlen Polytechnic International. Um, and today I'm just going to be talking about Kwantlen. And um, thank you guys for joining and showing interest for for uh, coming today to the presentation. So I'm going to start us off. KPU, Kwantlen Polytechnic University. Discover what is possible. So if you were here last year, maybe this will be familiar. Uh, we are Canada's only polytechnic university. So there are other Can there are other uh, Canadian um, polytechnic colleges out there, but we're the only ones that's a university. If you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot it in the chat or questions box. Um, I'll try to answer it during the, the presentation. Um, some questions, I'll leave it for after. Um, so we are a teaching-focused, hands-on university. Um, that means um, where our instructors are hired here to teach our classes. They're not hired mainly for research only. Um, we're an applied learning job ready. Um, and that's what the polytechnic part is in, in Kwantlen Polytechnic University. Uh, we're the third largest university in Metro Vancouver, over 140 unique programs, and with over 200,000 students who have studied here. So one of the reasons why people come to Kwantlen, come to KPU, is because of Vancouver. So Vancouver is in the west side of Canada. Um, we're in opposite side of where Toronto is. So Toronto is in the far east of Canada. We're in the far west. Um, we're one of the mildest climates in Canada. Um, so outside of Vancouver, sometimes in the winter, it goes down to minus 40 degrees Celsius um, in, the, in the winter. Um, we don't see that in Vancouver. So in Vancouver, um, in the winter, it's usually around zero degrees. Um, in the summer, you're looking around 25 degrees Celsius. So not cold in the winter, um, not super hot in the summer. We're safe, multicultural, laid back lifestyle. Um, one of the highest quality life in North America, ocean and mountains in our backyard. So as you can see, this is the central city, central part of downtown Vancouver. You got the mountains right behind it and you have the oceans just to uh, the left of it. So this is just a snapshot of the different uh, areas in our school. All right, I see your question there, Ice. Um, I will get to there. I will get to your question in a little bit here. So you can see just a little bit of the the locations in our school: Wilson School of Design, Civic Plaza. So we in uh, in Vancouver we have five um, five campuses. So our faculties, um, we have a range of faculties here in Kwantlen, um, pretty standard to other schools. Um, when you look at things like arts, uh, we have the typical philosophy, psychology, sociology, um, political science, um, business, um, entrepreneurial leadership, accounting. So for just another highlight for arts, so for arts, um, we are the only school in Western Canada that has a four-year journalism degree. So if any students are interested in uh, pursuing media, maybe wants to be a reporter or um, go into journalism and be a writer in that sense, um, we are the only school that offers a four-year bachelor's degree. Um, in terms of business, um, the main selling point of our business is being able to do co-op. Um, we do have the School of Business um, Council for Business Schools and Programs Accreditation. Um, this is one of the accreditations that most big uh, business schools in the world should have. Um, one of the things, business, uh, one of the reasons students would take our business programs is um, they want to do co-op. So co-op is the opportunity to work and to go to school at the same time. And this is the co-op statistics. Um, just to give you a highlight of um, like why students go to co-op, really. If you look at the bottom, you look at the graduate data, you could see the percentage of students um, 
in KPU who went to co-op and the percentage who are now working at a job after school. So that's 92%. 92 percent of students who went to co-op um, are working right after they finish school, which is a very high percentage. It just goes to show that the the job experience you get um, while you're going to school is so important um, and something that employers look at. Hello, guys. Thank you for joining. So earn while you, you learn. So co-op education is currently available in accounting, computer-aided design, criminology, um, the list goes on. As you can see, it's mainly business programs. Um, so business is one of those um, faculties um, that you really need ex industry experience is in. And uh, this is one of the selling points of one of the reasons why a lot of international students take our business programs. Just because when you leave the program, you're leaving with uh, the degree, your two-year degree, your four-year degree, and the work experience to get you into the workforce. So maybe our second most popular uh, faculty in our school would be the design. So that would be fashion design. So if there's anyone here interested in becoming fashion design, maybe making the clothes uh, celebrities wear, uh, making the clothes athletes wear, um, you want to check out our Wilson School Design. So in 2019, the Wilson School of Design was named Best Overall Fashion School in Canada. We've also won um, third place um, in North America, so including USA as well. We have programs such as interior design, fashion marketing, uh, fashion and technology. Um, so for students who maybe already have a bachelor's degree, you already have an undergraduate, you created, you finished, four years at a university in Turkey, or maybe you finished four years in um, in another country somewhere. Um, we do have postgraduate programs. Um, it's a bit limited at the time. Um, we're looking to implement masters in the next year or two, um, but this is what we have. So for post-baccalaureate diplomas in the business, you have accounting, operations, supply chain management, technical management, and human resources management. We do have a post-baccalaureate diploma for technical apparel. This is in our uh, Wilson School Design. And we have uh, two graduate diplomas, Global Business Management and Green Business Management and Sustainability. I just want to let people know if you are interested in do, um, applying for one of our postgraduate programs, they fill up very, very quickly. So I do suggest you apply well, well ahead. So going back to you there, Ace, um, about computer engineering. So unfortunately, as you can see, we do not have any master's program yet. Um, we do have computer science um, and co information technology undergraduate programs, but at this time, we do not have any master's yet. Um, unfortunately, we are looking to get some master's implemented. And I was, I hope one to two years, um, but at this time, we don't have anything for you yet. That is a great question. Thank you. All right, next, Sumas. I will skip this. That's kind of relevant. Um, for admission requirements. So how do you come to Canada? How do you get into Kwantlen? Um, it's very simple. Um, for undergraduate admission programs, we only have two requirements. So one is just to meet the English, so English proficiency requirement. And two is basically proof of high school graduation or uh, other credentials if you want to post-secondary. So if you, um, if you just graduated high school, you just have to submit your uh, high school transcript. Um, or if you went, did a two-year diploma at a uh, university in Australia, you just have to submit that transcript to us. Um, for the post-baccalaureate programs, it's the exact same admission requirements, except um, instead of just a high school, obviously to come into a post-baccalaureate or graduate level diploma, you need to show um, a completion of an undergraduate degree. So up at least a four years de uh, degree. And some of them have additional requirements too. So there's going to be some um, post-grad programs or other programs that maybe need you to have math, maybe chemistry. Um, for example, we have an engineering program 
that needs you to have uh, pretty high physics, chemistry, and mathematics marks. And that's going to be looking at your high school grades. So English, um, I would say this is the most important um, aspect, or most important part uh, for international students, the most important thing they need to know. Um, so how do you meet the English? Um, obviously, if you studied in Canada, um, you can see the requirements here for the grades you needed if you studied in Canada, if you took high school here. Um, but for most students in this uh, presentation, they're going to be looking at the far right side here at testing options. Um, the most common exam we receive is the IELTS, IELTS TS, um, with the overall band of 6.5 with a minimum 6.0 in each band taken within the last two years. Um, we, also, we are also accepting Duolingo English test um, at this time, if you guys are familiar. We started accepting Duolingo because um, of the when the pandemic started and it being only the only test that's fully online at the time. Uh, I believe now IELTS and TOEFL are just pure online as well, but at the time it was just Duolingo. Um, we are still planning to accept it. Um, we're not sure yet if it's gonna be permanent, but at this time we're accepting it up to spring 2023. So maybe you're thinking, oh no, um, those English requirements are pretty high. Uh, maybe you're still in high school now and you're, you think um, it might be a far reach. Um, don't worry, we have the pathway program. So the pathway program um, allows you to not meet the English requirement um, and take English upgrading classes while in Kwantlen. So for example, if you start in pathway three, um, because your IELTS is only 6.0, not 6.5, um, you would do one semester of nine credits with, of English classes, and you could add other semester, and you could take other um, university classes with it. Um, and so on. So if you're going to pathway one, which is an IELTS of 4.5, so that would be the lowest um, level of English you could have to get into Kwantlen, basically, right? So if you have an IELTS 4.5, you would take three semesters of English upgrading classes. Um, so obviously this is the, the reason why some students may, maybe won't do this, it's just, it's gonna cost more, right? So instead of your program being 60 credits, you're taking um, 69 credits because you're in pathway three, um, or you're taking 60, uh, 78 credits because you're in pathway two. So obviously you're gonna, there's gonna be more credits, there's gonna be more cost. Um, but the, the good thing is that it allows you to start your program when you want to, even if you don't meet the English, instead of waiting to improve your English and applying next year, for example. So cost. Um, cost, I think is also another factor, especially in Vancouver. Um, if you guys don't know, Vancouver is one of the most expensive cities um, in the world for rent. Um, for a one bedroom uh, apartment here in Vancouver, you're looking at around just a little around a little under $2,000 Canadian. And that's just the rent, right? So um, as you can see here in your tuition and student fees, that's how much it's going to cost. Um, approximate range uh, for students to come study here. And that's just for the school fees. Um, there's gonna be learning materials and uh, living costs as well. Okay, we got our question here. Living costs in Surrey. Good question, Faiza. So I will answer your question here. So yeah, so as good, so good catch there. Kwanlin is not in downtown Vancouver. Uh, Kwanlin is actually beside downtown Vancouver in a city called Surrey. Um, it's just like right beside Vancouver. Um, but to answer your question, Faiza, how, mu how much the cost of living in Surrey? About the same, really. Um, unfortunately, though, just just because of how, the reason why it's so expensive in Vancouver is because the city, uh, on top of the city is mountains. To the west of the city is uh, the ocean. To the south of the city is USA. Um, so when, when Vancouver started, um, it couldn't get bigger, right? So once it became big, that's when it started to become very expensive. And unfortunately, um, that's the whole issue we're having here right now. So Surrey is just as expensive 
maybe um, if you live a little away from the station, it's a little bit cheaper. But that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're thinking about coming here to Canada to study. Scholarships and awards. Um, so here in, here in Kwanlun, we every year we have about $2 million of scholarships. Um, so scholarships are also available to international students and especially students coming from uh, the Middle East, like Turkey, um, United, yeah, UAE. Um, these stu students that, such as yourself actually have additional scholarships for you just for international students. Um, but our biggest scholarship would be the President Entrance Scholarship, which is $20,000, a lot of money. Um, in spring 2022, um, which started in January 2022, um, we had three international students win the President Entrance Scholarships. So three international students got $20,000 Canadian each to study here in Kwantlen. Um, and the Merit Entrance Scholarships is also $5,000, and there's also lots of other scholarships depending on what program you got in. Okay, so I see your question here, Sirkan. Do you have any co-op programs like other universities in Canada? Yes, we do. Um, so as I do have a slide here of co-op for co-op, um, I'll, I'll come back, I'll go back just for you. Oh, uh, as you can see, Sirkan, you can see that these are the lists of programs that do have co-op in our school. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they're mainly business programs. Um, so there's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, just because for business, it's just so much more important in uh, the business industry to have work experience, right? Um, especially accounting, right? Um, if you're graduating accounting, an accounting program and you have no work experience, it's going to be a lot harder versus someone who who did co-op for three months or four or five months during their studies, and they could put that in their resume. That was a good question. All right, and I see another question here, Sueda. How can I apply for scholarships? So good question. For scholarships, yeah, so for scholarships, you just have to, um, basically it's a merit-based um, scholarship. What that means is that um, students apply and they kind of write a reason. So usually it's gonna be like a short um, one page paragraph of why you want to get the scholarships. Um, and uh, the people are chosen to get the scholarships based on the reason, like maybe um, you're traveling here um, because you want to be your dream of becoming a doctor, right? Um, um, basically, they want to see your passion and the reason why you came to Canada, why you're studying in Kwantlen, um, and students could, uh, could get their scholarships that way. Um, you have to apply after you become a Kwantlen student, so you have to think about applying first um, and then you could and then um, you can think about scholarships after that but that's a great question I have another question by Layla how does your university support the student's future career so we have many services um, things uh, I don't have the slide here but um, one of the ways we support is we have academic advisors. So academic advisors, just like um, myself, help students in making sure that they're choosing the right classes um, they're, and, they're cho and they're going towards the degree. Um, I'm, I know it's different in other universities uh, outside of Canada, but here in Canada, uh, when students are attending a university, the student has to choose their own class. So if you're a student, um, we don't choose your class for you. You have to choose your own classes. Um, so students have the freedom to choose their own um, to choose their own schedule and to choose what classes they want to take. Um, and we have academic advisors that students can see and meet um, to basically be guided to make to make sure that they're choosing the right class towards their degree. We have like counselors as well. We have career um, 
career aid department. So we have a we have a department in Kwantlen that just helps students find jobs, right? Helps them complete their resume, um, helps them um, prepare for interviews um, and find jobs. Volunteering as well, same as for co-op. If a student is interested in co-op, um, you're not gonna be looking for a job once you get into co-op. Um, you're gonna be placed into a job. So we have partnerships with big companies that want to take our students. It's like, please bring me more Kwanlin students um, that want so they could uh, teach them in co-op, have them for co-op and find uh, suitable employees for their companies. So it's a win-win situation for the company and for us. Our students are getting the work experience through co-op and the companies are getting um, highly qualified grads from Kwanlin. That was a great question, Leila. We got another question here by Murat. Hi again, I'm an architect and I want to do masters and work for my graduation. Is there any architectural masters program? If yes, could you please give me information about these programs? My GPA is 2.77 and I have a bachelor's degree, 100% English. So Murat, thank you for your interest and thanks again for joining me in the presentation. Great question. Um, Unfortunately, at this time in Kwantlen, we do not have master's degrees. Um, I believe I had another question. Ice asked us that same one earlier. Um, we are looking to have master's in Kwantlen in about one to two years, um, but we are still in the works. So thank you for, for interest. Um, thank you for ask, asking the question. But unfortunately, we just do not have master's at this time yet. Edda. Do you offer scholarships for Turkish students? Absolutely, yes, we do. All, the, all scholarships we have is for not for just Turkish students, it's for every student and who wants to apply for Kwantlen. So I see the other questions, I'll be there in a second. Um, I have two more slides actually, so let me quickly finish this um, and we'll get to the, and we'll shoot off the questions. Um, so in Kwanlin, it's very important uh, as an international student, actually, to meet friends, right? You're coming to Canada by yourself with sometimes no family, um, no friends. So in Kwanlin, we, we try to have events um, just for international students. So, uh, international students can meet other students as well. And this is very important um, just so you can make friends and you can be happy and create a social life here. During COVID, obviously, we couldn't do many of these things, but now uh, classes are no longer online. We're starting to be in person again. Um, so uh, we are having events again to uh, social events, like we're having the uh, orientation before the start of classes in person again. So another opportunity for international students at Kwantlen is study abroad. So it's a bit it's a bit interesting to think that they're coming to you're coming to Canada to study, but you could also from Canada go to somewhere else to study. So you could go to um, South America, you could go to, back to Europe, or you could even go to Asia and study at another university for one month or like three months, four months, and get credits for it. Right. So take a semester off your program, study in China, and you're going to get credits, and you get to experience living in a different country as well. So it's an opportunity that many international students don't think about, um, but is available to everyone. So this is my the end of my presentation. Um, as you can see, that's a picture of me. This is my contact information at the bottom right. Um, feel free to take a picture of it, um, write it down, and while and then I will be answering your questions here. So back to the questions. Sirkan Samli, what are the big companies you find a job in co-op program? Also, can we work in the first year of co-op? So good question. In, in, to answer your first question, what are the big companies uh, you could work in co-op? Lots. So here in Canada, um, if you're doing accounting, for example, you could be doing accounting. We have all the big accounting firms with an office here in Canada. So if you want to work at KPMG, you can have a co-op opportunity at KPMG which is one of the biggest, top three biggest accounting companies in the world. Um, for example, um, 
yeah, so many, 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 uh, even local companies as well, um, like um, big restaurant companies where you could work in their head office for accounting. Um, I can't really give other pro other companies out of the top of my head, but um, we have a lot, hundreds and hundreds of um, positions and jobs for our co-op students. Um, also, second, your second question, can we work in the first year of co-op? Co-op usually starts in your second year. Um, so we want students to basically, well, you need to learn first, right? So you need to learn uh, a little bit, little bit about your program first to create a foundation and then you start using it for work, right? So we want students to be, to do their first, maybe one, one and a half years of their program first before you get into co-op. Um, I just wanna make sure that people understand that co-op is not 100% you have to apply for it, okay? So just because you applied for the program um, doesn't mean you're gonna get co-op. Okay, another question, Pelin, Denise, Orhan. I'll read out your question. I am an English translation, I, I am an English translation interpretation senior year student from Turkey. I'm going to take TOEFL, IELTS, and TOEIC during the summer. I'm planning to get the CELTA after my graduation as well. Perfect, yeah. Um, for most schools, they will not need all three of those. You could probably just take one of one or the other. So for example, at Kwantlen, we only need either TOEFL or IELTS. Um, but if you wanna challenge yourself and you wanna see how well you could do it, it's a great, it's a great way um, to see to to, uh, to see your to see your level and to see your improvements. Okay, your question continues here. I'm considering to take a TEF and apply for French translation interpretation program in Canada. Do you have a program like this? Thank you. So we do not have a French translate interpretation program. Um, we do have international relations, um, but it's a little different than what you're thinking, I believe. Um, if you do want to go somewhere more French oriented, I do suggest you look at Quebec, which is in Eastern Canada. Um, it's more French focused area of Canada here in, in Vancouver in the West side of Canada, we don't have too many, um, too much French speakers because most French speakers in Canada are coming from the East coast. Um, but thank you for asking. Um, unfortunately we do not have any French translation interpretation programs for you. Okay, SM Guni, do you have any payment plans? So if you think, if you mean payment plans um, for uh, paying your tuition, unfortunately we do not. So um, basically when students start their classes, for example, if you're starting in September, um, students are gonna be expected to pay their full tuition fee. Um, for example, 20,000 Canadian, um, two weeks after they start classes. Um, so unfortunately students are gonna be expected uh, to pay everything together, um, but we do accept student loans. So if you have a company, a bank in your home country that maybe that you could get a loan, um, feel free to do that. But unfortunately we don't have any uh, university payment plans. So ICE, thanks again. Another question from you, which one is better, TOEFL or IELTS? Um, the most common res uh, English exam we receive at Kwantlen is IELTS. Um, TOEFL, I would think is considered to be more popular from students coming from Asia um, like Japan, South Korea, um, whereas IELTS is used more, it's, it's seen more in Europe, um, in the Middle East as well, but it doesn't matter. So as long as you meet the requirements for TOEFL or IELTS, you could submit either or. So whichever you want to take. Okay, one more question here by Sirkan. What is the tuition fee for co-op program and what are the minimum requirements? Ah, okay, good question. 
So for to the tuition fee for programs, you're paying the same amount as you would pay if you were taking classes. So for example, some co-op programs are going to be three credits. So for three credits, you're going to be paying three credits of um, classes for your program. Um, don't forget though, even though you're paying for to get credits for co-op, you're also getting money back, right? Because you're it's a paid job. What are the minimum requirements? So good catch. As 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 you may have heard earlier, I said students have to apply for co-op. Just because you're in, for example, um, business administration is not a hundred percent you're gonna get co-op. So when, when students apply, what, what we want to look for is basically um, your grades, right? So if a student who's coming from um, business administration, but they're failing their classes, they probably won't get into co-op. Um, the reason being is that obviously you're taking, a, you're taking time off to work, but if you're not, if you don't understand what you learned, the concepts, um, the theories from classes, you can't use it for work, right? So um, what the minimum requirements basically is grades, right? So the better your grades, the better chance you can get into co-op. All right. And I believe that's it for the questions. Oh, one more question from Sirkan. What is the next apply term for next semester? Good question. So right now, the next semester we have in Kualan would be summer 2022, which starts in May. That's going to be in about a month and a half. Um, that that semester, that intake is already all full. The next available one would be fall fall 2022, which starts in, in September 2022. Um, in this case, um, some of the programs are already full, mainly business programs. As I mentioned, it is the most popular faculty we have. Um, so, but our sciences, our arts still has lots of seats. So if you're interested, uh, you could apply to our fall 2022. Our spring 2023 is also open. Um, and spring 2023 is from January 2023. So that's next year, January. So to basically to summarize what, you, what your question, the answer to your question, Sirkan, um, mo for most students, they could probably apply to fall 2022. Um, if you're interested in business or maybe the post-baccalaureate programs, you're going to be looking at spring 2023. Good question, Leila. So your question is, what about IB schools concerning the entrance procedures? We, we accept IB credentials. So to be specific. Um, we, so if you can, you could meet your English requirement instead of submitting IELTS or TOEFL, uh, if you have completed English A, HL or SL with a minimum grade of three from the IB program. So this is something that, uh, you could submit to us, um, if you've, to, if you've taken the IB program in your school. Great question, everyone. I'm getting, you guys are asking really good questions. Okay. Okay, perfect. So um, my presentation is done. Um, had some really good questions. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing here. I hope you guys took a picture of my PowerPoint so you have my name. Um, Hi, Ken. Thank you very much for the great presentation and for the answers. Also, could you please share your email address on the chat box? Okay, thank you. Yes. Right, right, Zainab. I was, I was just doing that as you said that. So um, I just wrote down my personal email address on the chat box. Um, so I want to say thank you for joining us once again. Um, please write down my email address. That's my email. Um, I'm the international recruiter for the Middle East. So if anyone here has questions, maybe you want to ask me uh, more questions about co-op, maybe more detail about my presentation, please shoot me an email and I will get back to you. 
Um, I will also be sending a follow-up email to all people who joined me today. Um, I just want to say for people who are in the presentation, um, I will be offering free applications to Kwantlen. So um, normally it's $120 Canadian dollars to apply to KPU. Um, but if you were at the event today, it would be free. Um, just shoot me an email, just let me know. Um, and I'll be sending it out an email as well. So you can reply to that. Um, to answer your question, Sirkan, we have a LinkedIn account. Um, I do as well. Um, Kwantlen does. Um, you should be able to search just KPU International on LinkedIn. Um, we do have a LinkedIn account. Um, we're more active on our Instagram and Facebook. Um, feel free to shoot, uh, go there as well. I just want to thank Zaina um, and the organizers for setting this up um, and for inviting all you amazing people here today. I'm just putting a link as well in the chat box. That would be the main page for our international students at Kwantlen. So if you just want to take a look at it, you can see more information, program, what programs we have. Um, and to just browse our website, feel free to, to visit that link. Yes, thank you very much again, Ken. It was another great session with you and you covered all of the questions. Thank you for your answers again. And also I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Kanadan Politeknik Üniversitesi ile ilgili diğer soruları için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adresinden Ken'e ulaşabilirsiniz. Bir sonraki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again, Ken. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you, Zeynep. And thank you, everyone. And thanks for all the audience. I hope to hear back from you. Have a great one, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.